talk. Um, oh, okay, cool. All right, guys. Um, I have Derek on the other land that he's going to be also presenting to you guys, and I'm going to have him talk a little bit. For like as before, um, we have the disclaimer where you know. First of all, this is not an Airbnb sponsored event. This is a personal event that myself and Derek created. Um, the information contained in the website is meant only for guidance purposes and not as a professional legal or tax advice. We do not give you personalized legal tax investment or any business advice in general. And for professional consultation, please see the visit Derek's site at shareeconomycpa.com or contact your um, lawyer, I mean your accountant, because you are, you know, this is your livelihood and we want to make sure that everybody is safe. So without much ado, let me put Derek on the line with you guys. Derek, your life. Um, can you please, always say it's your photo, Derek. Hi, Evelyn. How are you? Can you hear me now? I could hear you, but all I have is your photo and I don't see you in your room. Can you see me yes, now? Yes, I can see you now. It's a little bit uh, pixelated, uh -huh. but yes, I can see you now. Okay, awesome, awesome. Let me, I don't... So, so should we get should we get started on the PowerPoint then? Yeah. Why don't we? Um, uh, this is Derek, guys. And so, why don't we just have a little bit of your story, Derek? I know you are a share economy CPA at the moment, but why don't we just have a little bit of an introduction? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, so I started in public accounting at a, a firm called Deloitte and Touche um, back in January of 2010, and I spent about three years there. And then I, I jumped over to another firm called uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers, and I was there for about another two years. Um, I left at the end of September to join the, um, I guess, shared economy on demand economy. Uh, primarily because I was really interested in it, and I saw that there was such explosive growth. But when I was talking to uh, fellow Airbnb hosts, Uber and Lyft drivers, I I soon realized that there was a huge knowledge gap in um, in what people knew and how uh, they could actually save money. And so, kind of just sparked my interest in it, and and then I I, I decided just to to become a full full time CPA, um, servicing the shared economy. Cool. Well, thank you so much for um, wanting to talk to us and taking part of your Saturday for this conversation. So why don't we just start with the presentation. Let me just do a yeah, screen share of that and so that people can see what we're talking about. I think present to everybody and there you go. All yours, Derek. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so here is... Um, Let's see. Do I? Okay. Do you see Schedule C or E? Oh no! Why isn't I sharing it with you? My friends are not seeing it. I'm sorry. There's a major delay on my side. Okay. We're having a major delay on this side, so I don't know why it's doing that. I'm sorry, guys. Technical. You know how it is. Um. Yep. Oh, there you are. Do you see the, the second page? Oh, I see. It. You see it? There you go. Cool. Okay. Um, so I guess this is kind of one of the first things that I, I always talk about with Airbnb hosts. And I actually spoke with another Airbnb host um, about an hour ago about what forms to fill. So she originally rented out her home for about half the year. And then she moved. And so she, she got a full-time uh, rentee. So um, if you are, if you do kind of get in that space and you, you do have a full-time rentee, then, then more, it's more likely than not that your income and losses will be reported on your Schedule E. Um, to determine if you have a, uh, what, which tax forms to use, there's a, there's a seven question materiality um, that's posed by the Internal Revenue Service. And, and pretty much what it just what it says is, you know, do you regular, continue, and continuously uh, perform your your work or services on a substantial basis? Um, this is really important for Airbnb hosts to know, um, as opposed to an Uber driver, where where the main source of uh, income is actually giving rides. 
But however, uh, with an Airbnb host, your main source of income is, is either running out your room or your place. Um, so this is this is why um, it's important to kind of know the seven point test and, and kind of determine, okay, do I want to report my income on either Schedule C or Schedule E? Um, and and so going on to the next slide, um, Schedule C um, active income. What will happen is if you do decide um, that you fall under Schedule C, uh, you will be expected to pay self-employment tax. So self-employment tax is at 15.3 percent, um, and it's an added-on tax. So not only are you paying self-employment tax, you're also paying personal income tax. Um, so for uh, the more obvious reasons, you know, you, you may be asking, okay, why would I ever want to report on Schedule C? A Schedule C is good because you can also net losses against income. So say, for example, you know, you got your Airbnb uh, operations up and running in the first year and you, you're going to run a loss, what, and what a loss means is that your expenses exceed your income you could then net some of those losses against your your active income. So what what would be your active income is, you know, if you have a W2 job or you have other 1099 income. So um, so that's that's generally why um, putting your Airbnb income on um, on a schedule C may be preferred. Um, and this is beyond the 7 point materiality test. If if you are kind of on the borderline and you know you could either fall in each category. Um, it is important to note that um, if you have a Schedule C active income, um, you can also net those those um, either gains or losses against other sources of income, and, and also the vice versa. You know if if you're doing other type of freelance work or 1099 work, and you have a loss on there, you can net that loss against your Airbnb gain. So they all they all kind of work together. Um, unfortunately, these rules don't always apply to Schedule E, which is passive. So um, passive income is is good um, in the sense that you don't have to pay self-employment tax, but um, but there are special uh, passive income loss limitations um, that you need to be aware of. So I guess going on to the next slide. So this is this is kind of like a, a hypothetical example. Um, if you have Schedule C active income and you are a single filer, um, you will be expected to pay approximately um, seventy-eight hundred dollars in taxes. Um, and how that was computed was your thirty-five thousand times ninety-two point three five percent. That's a rate that's determined by the IRS on your Schedule C, and then you have the fifteen point three percent self-employment tax. So in addition to self-employment tax, you also have personal income tax. So it's $22,000. Um, and if you're wondering how I got that number, it's $35,000 minus your exemption that you claim for yourself minus your standard deduction minus half of your self-employment tax. So out of the uh, about $5,000 that you have in self-employment tax, uh, approximately half of that is actually tax deductible. So once you get down to the $22,000 mark, um, that falls you in a tax bracket that will uh, force you to pay about $2,900 in, self, in personal income tax. Um, so the total, the total amount of your earnings um, going to tax is around 22%. All right. Next slide. Yes. So... Um, Obviously, as a as a CPA, one of the one of the biggest questions I always get is, you know, how do I pay less tax? So the easiest and best way to pay less tax is to have and keep track of your business expenses. So scenario one correlates to the previous slide, and scenario two is a hypothetical example. If you are keeping track of all of your business expenses. Um, and so what, what you can see happens is that you get, you're you placed in a $10,000 taxable uh, bracket and what happens with that is your self-employment tax takes a huge dip but also your personal income tax drops you in a much lower tax bracket. So it's, it's really important to keep track of all your business expenses because that is the single best way to uh, 
uh, lower the amount of taxes that you have. Okay, so next slide, which is tax deductions, guys, the most important thing. Yeah, so so tax deductions are really uh, really helpful. Um, so advertising, if you if you advertise your place um, on outside of Airbnb, I, I recently spoke to a tax client a couple weeks ago, who um, he was actually a New York host, and what happened was he was building up such a huge clientele list that he started his own website on the side um, and he was able to then do Facebook marketing for that site. So if you have any of those fees, uh, definitely keep track of those and deduct those. Um, tra auto and travel expenses. The, um, I, I also have a host that's based out of San Francisco but their property is actually in, in Florida and so they're always flying back and forth to visit their properties. So um, anytime you have those expenses, those are those are absolutely tax deductible. Um, cleaning and maintenance those are great those are great deductions if if you get um, if you have cleaning fees. However, please note that if you charge your your host um, uh, a, a sort of cleaning and maintenance fee, and that gets reported on your ten or on your on your ten ninety nine, make sure that you report the gross amount, uh, the amount that's listed in box 1A on your Schedule C or Schedule E and then you list out the cleaning expense separately. You you don't want to net those two and you want to make sure that whatever is reported in, in box 1A on your 1099 is identical to what's reported either on your Schedule C or Schedule E. Hey Derek, one question. I'm sorry to stop you there, but um, on the Airbnb 1099, they do not separate cleaning fees from our income. All they did, because um, I have my 1099 somewhere here in the house, and what they did was they actually just gave us the 1099 and included the expenses of the cleaning. You know, the the cost, the additional cost for the cleaning fees. How they broke it out, and I'm actually trying to look at my nice Airbnb 1099. Um, yeah, right here. What they did was it says a number of payment transactions on box three, and then box five A. It just all they did was by month how much money I was making. They, Correct. Okay. All right, but you're saying, yeah. but on one A it includes everything. It includes the right. gross amount, which includes Airbnb's fees, guys. Just remember that that on your gross amount. Airbnb is including the 3% that they deduct from you. That's why it's higher than probably what you receive. And I imagine that it also includes any cleaning fees that they provided, right? That they charge the guests? Exactly, exactly. So what you want to do is if you decide it's Schedule C income, you'll want to report that 1099 number identical on your Schedule C. So what's going to happen is Airbnb is also going to send that 1099 to the IRS and they're going to quickly uh, check the two figures and they're just going to run them up uh, identical. So what you want to do is you'll want to put the 1099 number exactly as it is in box 1A on your Schedule C and then clearly list out, you know, so Airbnb's fee of 3%, you'll want to put that either on commissions and then you'll want to put the, the cleaning fee on a separate line. Okay. Yeah, and that will be part of the deductions that you're including besides the cleaning fees, right? I mean, because you're doing cleaning fees, the Airbnb fees, um, everything else that, that you spend, like those towels and sheets and furniture. I mean, bless yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Dude, you got oh, a bad you. cold. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. yeah, no, I'm okay. It's, uh, it's just a, a Saturday morning for me. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, all right. Yeah. If you need to take a minute, go ahead. Just mute yourself. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going on with you know commissions and and the rest. Go ahead. Yeah, so so those are also you know great tax deductions. If you if you have any insurance, I know there is a, a shared economy. Um, I guess support. Um, I wouldn't say union, but um, they provide insurance for Airbnb hosts. It's it's a website called Peers. dot org, um, and if you pay any sort of insurance to Peers, uh, you would want to also deduct those as well legal and other professional fees. So I, I, I currently have a tax client who is um, working with an attorney um, that I, I'm happy to refer if anyone's interested. That's actually helping her incorporate her Airbnb business because she's thinking about 
growing and expanding it because she's had such great traction um, and she's really falling in love with the space. Um, so any sort of legal or, or, or accounting fees, you know, if, if anyone needs um, help with accounting, I'm, I'm more than happy to talk with them after this, this webinar. Um, those are all tax deductible and those all definitely help you save money and pay less tax. Um, management fees, so I, I believe there there's a lot of new management companies that are popping up that are helping host um, with um, with cleaning as well as giving handing the keys off and and kind of providing a full suite of services. Um, those are also deductible. Um, and then also rental payments. Uh, but note that you'd also want to you want to rent uh, deduct your rent in a proportionate amount. Um, so say for example you rent your rent is a thousand dollars a month and you are um, you are renting out your home half the month so you can only deduct five hundred dollars so the proportionate use um, and another great tax deduction is your cell phone so you're always talking to hosts or in potential or excuse me you're always talking to guests and potential guests on your phone so say for example your cell phone bills a hundred dollars a month and you're talking to to potential guests and guests half the time so you'd want to deduct half of that um, half of that hundred dollars so you'd want to deduct about fifty dollars um, and then any sort of utilities so say for example you you have you know a premium cable something of that nature um, for your guests you'd want to deduct that in a proportionate amount um, so I guess going on to the next slide um, okay next slide so there's so there's a couple um, there's a couple recommendations um, for I guess keeping accounts. Um, what you can do is you can keep uh, a separate bank account for all your uh, income and expenses related to Airbnb, um, and that's kind of a good way to kind of I guess help clear um, I guess your your expenses. Um, sometimes that may be a little difficult if uh, you have you you forget you know to always charge to one account. Um, Another another thing I, I, I also helped launch a, an app called Tabby. Uh, the website's trytabby t a b b y dot com, and that helps you keep track of all your expenses, and it also helps you categorize your deductions um, based on your Schedule C. Um, and the app is definitely free to use um, if if people are interested in that. Um, that's another way to kind of keep track of all your expenses. And guys, um, um, just to let you know, we are actually going to do a webinar, and my April webinar is going to be about um, apps and resources that could help you out as a host, from Tabby to Beyond Pricing. So we're going to do a more of um, companies that want to help us out as hosts and how to manage better. Okay, but um, but this is a good way for you to you know if you want to start trying out try Tabby, and and you know Derek's one of the founders of it. Um, he will answer questions for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Please feel free to email me directly. Um, my email is Derek at TryTabby or Share to Call Me CPA. If you guys have any questions at all, um, please always feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm I'm always here to answer any sort of questions that uh, come about. And so now to just get to part of the questions. So here are some of the questions that you guys have already um, asked from way before. Um, and we will get to the questions also within the chat. We're already at 2.30, but, you know, we'll, we'll try to answer you guys as much as possible and keep this Saturday rolling, okay? Yeah, so, um, so let's see. So Wiley from Texas. So withholdings are, are, are definitely a big kind of issue, um, especially for 1099ers. Um, I, I do, I've heard that certain banks will allow you to um, put away money every time you have a deposit. Um, that's always that's always been kind of the best way to go, to go about doing that right now. Um, I think if you can kind of try to budget around maybe it, to to be kind of conservative, maybe around um, thirty percent, which I, I I do understand is a, is a lot, especially if uh, Airbnb is your primary source of income. Um, but it will kind of allow you to keep a cushion um, if if you do have um, taxes uh, that are due at the end of the year. And I'm going to interrupt here, Derek. Um, host, just to let you know, 
this is only income taxes. We're not going to have any conversations today about hotel occupancy or sales taxes because that will all depend upon your city, your state, and what is going on and your situation. What is it that you provide? to your guests, it will depend on whether you have to pay those other additional taxes. So what Derek's talking about is basically just income taxes for your state and city um, and not all these other taxes that we'll probably be incurring in the future and that Airbnb is working on giving the different cities. I mean, I just read that um, Airbnb just paid millions of dollars to the city of San Francisco for back sales taxes and hotel taxes um, just this week. So. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Derek. Continue. Yeah, no, and and that's a really good point, Evelyn. And maybe even in our next follow-up um, webinar, we may want to cover room and board tax because that's a huge issue that's blowing up right now. Um, and that's that's exactly what San Francisco paid. They they paid uh, 25 million in back taxes. Um, so that could be that could definitely be. Yeah, that's uh, that's a whole can, can of worms, and I wrote an actual an actual blog post about it because I testified at uh, the last city council on behalf of Airbnb, and my accountant, who's not Derek, just to let you know, guys, the disclaimer. Um, my um my accountant did research for about six months, and I do not have to pay at the moment per the law. I don't have to pay sales or hotel taxes because I don't provide a breakfast, there's some caveats on it which make me exempt from, from that, but you know, this the, it's, it's really complex, it's really complicated, and I know that every city and every state have different laws about that, but let's continue on with uh, Susan's questions, next question. Yeah, so some, some commonly overlooked deductions, I think I, I, I might have touched on it before, but I, I think a lot of the utilities bills those are always overlooked. Um, cell phone bills, another overlooked uh, tax deduction, and you know things that you buy maybe for your guests. So if you do buy food for them, those can be considered tax deductible. If you buy any sort of beds, new new bedding, any sort of new pillows, um, comforters, I, I I think there's a lot of things that you that you tend to buy that you don't always kind of keep track of. So it's always important to whatever system you're using, just always to kind of check in with it because you are buying things here and there that you don't always think that's related to your Airbnb, but it, but it actually is. So, um, you know, it's just really important to keep clear records and always keep track of all of the things that you're purchasing. Um, so going on to audit triggers, the, be the biggest audit trigger is having mismatched 1099 amounts and running a loss. So, you know, if you if you do decide to put your income on Schedule C and you have a massive loss and you try to net that against uh, any sort of W-2 income, that could definitely trigger an audit. Um, in terms of statistical sampling, I was looking at some numbers this year, um, this past week on um, on um, IRS audits, and and the numbers are are pretty low, you know, around one or two percent of people are at, are actually getting audited. Um, but what can trigger that is is massive losses and recurring losses. So what the IRS doesn't want to see is that you're creating an entity, or you you have some sort of Airbnb, uh, I guess Schedule C just to have a loss. And so if they continue to see losses year after year, you could potentially get audited. <laughs> Um, and then in terms of incorporating either as, as an LLC or S Corp, that's entirely up to what you want to do with your business and, and where you want to go. So if you, if you really love being a host and, and you're thinking about expanding either um, maybe purchasing another unit, running out more units um, that you can then turn to Airbnb houses or homes, you know, that's, that, that might be a good time to kind of consider um, getting incorporated, but that's that's entirely up to you and, and your future goals. You know, if you're if you're just doing this on the side for fun and and just kind of helping supplement your income, then then it generally is not really necessary to get incorporated. Um, the primary reason people get incorporated is to protect their personal assets. So if you have a lot of assets that you're you're kind of worried that um, you know if you do get in any sort of legal trouble and you want to protect it, um, you can. But um, I, I think the big caveat with getting 
uh, incorporated is that um, it's just a, it's an administrative nightmare. There's a lot of paperwork that you have to file and, and keep up to date. Um, so those are those are some considerations. Um, and then in terms of capitalization and depreciation versus expense, that that entirely depends on um, what type of uh, expenditures that you're incurring and um, and how you want to depreciate that or expense it. Um, and there's there's special rules and limitations that apply to each category, um, but unfortunately that's a case by case um, issue, and so I, I can't really give just overview guidance on that um, because uh, tax is so fact specific that you know if I'm not aware of every single fact and circumstance and um, my uh, recommendations might be um, inaccurate. Um, and then point five, that's that's definite. Um, uh, an issue that I've, I've, I, I think I've, I've covered. Um, so I guess on the next slide. Um, wow. Well, um, so generally speaking, if you are performing the work yourself, you that that can't be tax deductible. So. Um, what you could do is you would then, I guess, you would you would then pay yourself, but um, that would work. That would be a payment that would be then deducted on your Schedule C, but then you would have to then pick that up on your 1040. So the the net effect would be kind of minimal, but it would be a lot extra work for you. So um, generally speaking, if, if you're performing the work yourself, you you don't want to. I, I wouldn't deduct that, but what you would want to deduct is then all the supplies um, that you purchased to um, to uh, to perform the cleaning duties. So um, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're you're gonna purchase cleaning supplies that you will inadvertently use for Airbnb um, in cleaning the rooms or or cleaning the house. So it's always important to keep track of those expenses and, and deduct those either in full or in proportionate use of how much it relates to your Airbnb. Um, so depreciation on a house, um, that is, that's that's good in the sense that um, you can depreciate more and what that will do is that, that, that will increase your cash flow, but what will the, then end up happening is that when you sell, if you do decide on selling your home, you could have a potential huge capital gain um, it's important to note that you can only depreciate your house. You cannot depreciate the land. It can only be the house itself. Um, and that can be a great tax deduction, but it requires a lot of uh, meticulous paperwork if you do get audited. And then at the end of the... Um, and then if you do decide to sell your home, you're, you're going to have um, some potential capital gain issues. Um, and then when do you... Uh, when would you use a Schedule C instead of Schedule C, uh, E? But um, that entirely depends on the material participation test by the IRS, and you know how much I guess added work do you do for your guests? You know, do you do you, um, and how many hours do you spend kind of helping get the guests in and settled? And and um, you know, it, it generally speaking, if you have a a management company handling all of your bookings, cleanings, and and everything along along those lines and all you do is kind of just kick back and, and you, you get the money, then that would probably be considered Schedule E. But if you're actively talking to hosts, you're actively cleaning um, the, the, the room or home and, and you're constantly um, buying new things for the guests, you know, such as food, maybe I, I, I know that um, I've talked to some tax clients that buy flowers and other kind of nice things for your guests and you're actively participating, that would then be considered uh, potentially Schedule C activity. Um, so uh, checking off the rental box um, on Schedule E, um, that that definitely uh, depends on on your your personal tax situation um, and how many how many days out of the year you rent. Um, a good tax note, um, uh, a good tax tip, I, I guess I should say, to keep track of everything is that if you rent your home out for less than 15 days of the year, you will not be taxed on that. And that's based on uh, IRS publication. Um, so going on to the last question, 
Um, yeah. So how do you uh, uh, would it, yeah. So how would you uh, proportionally run off? Um, you would so you want to I guess tally up everything, and then if you have three separate units, you'd want to divide it by three. Um, but granted, this is I, I I can't really advise on this um, in particular because I I don't know if they're all being rented out um, in full use if if there's any sort of if you personally stay there. So unfortunately, I I can't give direct guidance on that question. Um, so according to IRS uh, section or publication 583, uh, starting a business and keeping track of your uh, expenses, there's no direct, the IRS doesn't require a specific record keeping, uh, record keeping process. Um, there are a few cases where they do require it, but generally speaking, you don't have to keep any specific records. <laughs> So, it's, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, what I mean by that is to substantiate a business expense, you need the name, the date, the amount, and the essential business characteristic of the expense. So, it, as long as you fulfill those four criteria, it can be can be considered as substantial evidence. Um, so, yeah. To answer your question, um, just to reiterate, it's the name, the date, the amount. <clears throat> and the essential business characteristic. So what is that business expense? So for this example specifically, you would have Vaughn's today's date, so February 21st, $100, and then you bought, you know, yogurt for guests, or, you know, you bought some sort of food for your guests. So that can be considered substantial business, um, or that can be considered um, supporting documentation for the IRS. So I guess going on the next slide. Yeah, these are just some some links. And resources um, and guys, hi Derek, sorry. Um, guys, I'm I'm the host. I'm gonna post all of these resources on the side. I'm gonna write a little bit of a, a post about taxes. That's gonna be coming up this week. Um, after this this uh, webinar, so we could have some information. And again, guys, remember this is go and see an accountant. Um, this is a lot more complex than just hitting H&R Block, and actually, I I have some links for H&R Block and TurboTax because they ask about people ask they were about Airbnb, and they also answer some of the questions. Um, and I will gonna give you the different the two different publications that I found that had to do with rental income. Um, so I I know I, there's something going going on. Well, oh, Danny asked a question. The IRS doesn't know how many days you rent less than 15 if they get a 1099. Actually, Danny, um, on the Airbnb um, 1099, um, it's actually saying the number of payments and transactions. So mine is 127. So they will know that you're renting for more than 15 days. Um, because I know that if you rent less than 15 days, and Derek, correct me if I'm wrong, you do not have to report the income. Uh, you do, you do not have to pay tax on on that income. So let me pull the IRS publication. Um, so it's IRS publication um, five twenty seven. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's important to definitely talk to the right people. Um, if you have a lot of uh, Airbnb income and, and you could be exposed to a lot of tax, um, so so yeah, it's just finding someone that you trust. Which I know, believe me, it's it's a lot of stuff. Um, do you guys have any other questions? We're gonna keep Derek for like another five minutes because it is two forty-five. So we've got beyond our time. It is Saturday and as you can hear him, he's having his morning, Saturday morning stuff. <laughs> um, I can give you a free night to someone in exchange for them promoting my listing on their blog Facebook. Can I deduct them as an advertising expense? So Derek, uh, I don't know if you've seen the chat on your on your site, but um, Alex asks, oh no, he sent it to me in private. If I give a free night to someone in exchange for them promoting my listing 
or taking photos, can I deduct that as an advertising expense? Um, there are special rules around kind of exchanging likes, goods, and services. I mean, it, it definitely also depends on if the other person's recording it. Um, yeah, I, it, it's hard. I mean, it, it really that that definitely depends on on the risk tolerance of your accountant. I mean, I I if that were my tax client, I probably would not want to deduct that. But you may find an accountant that that would be willing to deduct it for you. Yeah, and um, and guys, you know, just to let you know, it's it really depends on how aggressive you are with your taxes. I tend to be a little bit more conservative because I have been audited in the past, not since I do Airbnb, but about 10, 20 years ago, I was audited, and I was I was a student, man, and my accountant quit the day of the audit, which was really <laughs> bad. It really was really really bad. Um, but you know what? The IRS was actually really nice to me. Believe it or not, they actually were like really nice, and they gave. There were some some situations, so I'm really careful about my taxes. So it depends on, are you uh, conservative with your taxes, or are you aggressive in reference to payment and things like that? So you have to be just decide on your style and and who do you want to be. I'm trying to just see whatever um, what other questions we got, Danny. Uh, can we? Um, Wendy, can we deduct a new fridge or washer and dryer? Um, will it just be on the space for the uh, for the host? I mean, Derek, what will be your your question there? Your yeah, yeah. So my follow up question would be: Is is I mean, what's the use? Is it going to be used exclusively for your Airbnb host, or is it going to be used for you as well? You know, so there there may be a proportionate deduction, and then also when you're buying, um, you know, the, the, those are also considered home improvements. So you can all, either capitalize it or you could depreciate it. So you know, it really kind of depends on the situation. Um. So um, I'm getting a question from Chuck. He's saying, I just started. Should I set up a new bank account for Airbnb and pay cable and cleaning supplies, etc., on the new bank account, um, and getting paid on it? I, I mean, I just did it, and I've been hosting for four years, and I just became an LLC, and I just started doing, um, having a separate credit card and a separate bank account for all my Airbnb income and expenses. Um, but I have to be really careful about that. Derek, what's your opinion on this? Um, it, it entirely depends on the individual. I mean, if it's easier, if it's if it's difficult for you to kind of keep track of your expenses, then then yeah, having a separate account would help. Um, but but then you'd have to just kind of keep note of that account. Is it checking? Is it you know? Is it a credit? You know what 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 type of account is it? And um, yeah, it, it entirely depends on the individual. All right, guys, it is 2.45. It is time to say goodbye. Um, we got, uh, as what we, we are going to, his, his information is actually on the webinar registration page. And on my site, you could just go share economy um, CPA. And we will also be providing you, again, I'm going to write, this webinar is going to be live as well. And um, I'm going to write a, a a blog post about this with Derek about what can you do and everything else. But guys, thank you so much, Derek. If you want to say any last words, uh, yeah, uh, I guess happy tax season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just keep those receipts, guys. Remember, you know, Uncle Sam wants your money, <laughs> and you yeah. know, we pay taxes because we made it. You know, we are making money. You know, people get surprised, and I always get a little bit like, "Come on!" I actually want to pay a lot of taxes because it means I made a lot of money so you know let's be happy about that all right guys thank you have a great Saturday over here it's snowing and cold and I'm glad I'm not in Boston all right have a yeah. great day okay bye bye <laughs>